They laughed when China tried to catch up. For years, experts said China could only copy, never lead. Japan had the famous Shinkansen bullet trains. Germany had pioneered magnetic levitation research since the 1970s. These were the world's undisputed railway giants. And China was considered decades behind. But you know, something unexpected happened. In just a few decades, China went from being a follower to building the world's largest high-speed rail network. Over 30,000 kilometers of track now cut across the country, linking nearly every major city and carrying hundreds of millions of passengers each year. That scale is something no other country has ever achieved. Still, China wasn't satisfied. In 2022, at the Berlin Transportation Expo, Chinese engineers rolled out their boldest creation yet, a new super high-speed maglev train capable of hitting 620 kilometers per hour. Instead of applause, many Western media outlets mocked it, calling it unrealistic, even a fantasy. And that's where our story begins. A nation determined to prove its critics wrong. A project that could reshape the future of travel. And a question the world still can't answer. Is this China's biggest gamble or its greatest leap forward? For decades, the center of high-speed rail innovation wasn't China. It was Japan and Germany. Japan's Shinkansen, launched back in 1964, became the world's first bullet train and a symbol of engineering pride. Year after year, Japan refined its designs, making them safer, faster, and more efficient. Meanwhile, Germany spent decades experimenting with magnetic levitation. As early as the 1970s, German engineers were testing maglev trains outside Hamburg, dreaming of floating trains long before anyone else seriously considered it. This long history mattered. Rail technology isn't something you invent overnight. It's capital intensive, knowledge heavy, and requires thousands of trial runs to perfect. Just like you wouldn't expect a new soccer team to beat Brazil or Argentina in their first World Cup, most people didn't expect China to catch up to countries with half a century of experience. So when China first entered the high-speed rail scene, the world's experts assumed it would stay a follower buying foreign technology, imitating designs, and always lagging behind the masters. That's why China's rapid rise in this field shocked so many people. It broke the so-called rules of how long it should take a country to master a technology this complex. China didn't simply wake up one morning and invent the world's fastest train. The progress followed a clear strategy, one that officials often describe in four steps, introduce, digest, absorb, and reinvent. At first, China introduced foreign technology, it signed contracts with companies from Japan, Germany, and France to supply trains and equipment. But unlike some countries that just import and run, China insisted on technology transfer agreements. That meant foreign firms had to share the know-how behind the machines. Then came the second step digest. Chinese engineers studied these systems intensely, taking them apart, running countless tests, and understanding not just how they worked, but why. After digestion came absorb. This is where China pushed domestic companies to start producing parts, building supply chains, and writing their own technical standards. Finally, the last step was reinvent. By combining what they had learned with their own massive manufacturing capacity and unique challenges, such as extreme climates and long-distance travel demands, China began creating trains that were no longer copies, but their own original designs. It's like learning to cook. At first, you follow someone else's recipe. Then you experiment, swap ingredients, and eventually invent dishes that others want to copy from you. That's exactly how China moved from follower to contender, and eventually to leader. Scale is China's secret weapon. Today, China's high-speed rail network stretches over 30,000 kilometers, more than the rest of the world combined. To put that in perspective, that's enough track to circle the entire Earth almost once. Why does this matter? Because scale creates momentum. Every kilometer of track is a real-world laboratory. Every day, millions of passengers give engineers data on performance, safety, energy use, and wear and tear. In other words, China doesn't just build trains, it operates them on a massive living testbed no other country has. This size also gives Beijing the confidence to invest in next-generation projects. A smaller country might hesitate to spend billions on experimental technology that may or may not work. But China's gigantic passenger demand means even small improvements, like cutting one hour off travel between two megacities, can benefit tens of millions of people and generate huge economic returns. Think of it like smartphones. 
Apple sells hundreds of millions of iPhones a year, which gives it the money and motivation to experiment with new chips, new designs, and new features. China's rail network works the same way. Its enormous scale makes bold innovation not just possible, but practical. This wasn't a side project or a flashy demo for headlines. It was a national bet. The Chinese government committed around 30 billion yuan, that's over 4 billion US dollars, to develop a next generation maglev train, and not just for a year or two. The program stretched across eight years of research, testing, and redesigns before the world saw the first results. Why such a big investment? Because China wanted more than just fast trains. It wanted to show the world that it could not only match Japan and Germany in railway technology, but potentially surpass them. Building a maglev wasn't about solving today's problems only. It was about preparing for the next 30 to 50 years of transportation, setting the foundation for routes that could connect megacities at airplane speeds but with train convenience. Of course, this made it risky. Spending billions with no guarantee of success is like placing a huge bet in a poker game. You either win big or lose big. For the government, success meant prestige, technological independence, and potentially a new export industry. Failure would mean wasted money, criticism at home, and more fuel for skeptics abroad. That's why this train became more than steel and magnets. It became a test of whether China's long-term gamble on innovation would pay off. Here's the magic question. How does a train reach 620 kilometers per hour without wheels? The answer is magnetic levitation, or maglev for short. Instead of wheels grinding against steel rails, maglev trains float above the track. Powerful magnets lift the train just a few centimeters off the guideway. Then, another set of magnets pushes and pulls it forward using what's called a linear motor. Basically, an unrolled electric motor stretched along the track. The big advantage? No friction from wheels. Imagine trying to slide across the floor in socks. You stop quickly because of friction. Now picture sliding on ice, or even better, hovering just above the surface. You'd glide almost effortlessly. That's what maglev does for trains. Different types of maglev exist. Medium and low speed versions already run in some cities, reaching 200 to 400 kilometers per hour. But China's high speed maglev prototype is designed to push the limits up to 620 kilometers per hour, nearly twice as fast as many conventional bullet trains. That speed rivals airplanes, but with the convenience of a train station in the city center. So when people call it a super train, it's not exaggeration. It really is a different class of technology built on physics that changes how we think about rail travel. China's maglev journey didn't happen overnight. It followed a rapid but clear timeline. It began in 2014 when Beijing officially launched the high-speed maglev research program. At that point, China had plenty of experience with conventional high-speed trains, but maglev was new territory. Engineers set out with one clear goal, design a system that could reach airplane-like speeds while staying safe, stable, and efficient. Fast forward to 2019. After just five years, China rolled its first high-speed maglev prototype off the assembly line in Qingdao. That was a major moment. It proved the technology wasn't just theory on paper, it was a real train that could be tested on tracks. Engineers spent the next few years refining the design, running experiments, and pushing the limits of what the train could handle. Then came September 2022 at the Berlin International Transport Expo. For the first time, China unveiled its maglev prototype to the world stage. The message was clear. This wasn't just a domestic experiment. It was a statement of ambition. And while many foreign outlets reacted with skepticism, some even with ridicule. The fact remained. China had moved from zero to global contender in less than a decade. In the world of rail technology, where progress usually moves at the speed of decades, that pace was nothing short of remarkable. The maglev train may float, but the track it runs on is anything but light. This is where the glamour of futuristic speed collides with the cold weight of engineering reality. Unlike a regular high-speed rail line, Maglev requires a precision-built guideway. The track must be perfectly aligned, with tolerances so tight that even small shifts can cause instability. Imagine trying to balance a spinning coin on a narrow edge. That's how sensitive maglev alignment can be. Every kilometer of track demands massive foundations, carefully measured curvature, and near-perfect straightness. Then there's the hardware itself. The guideway isn't just concrete. It's embedded with powerful electromagnets that lift and propel the train. 
These require huge amounts of steel, specialized alloys, and in some cases, rare earth materials to keep the system efficient. It's like building not just a road, but a giant linear motor stretching across entire cities. This is why maglev projects are so challenging to expand. It's not just about laying tracks, it's about constructing a gigantic precision machine that spans hundreds of kilometers. The engineering burden explains why many countries hesitate, because while the train floats effortlessly, the infrastructure beneath it is heavy, costly, and unforgiving. Here's the part that makes governments sweat the price tag. Building a high-speed maglev line can cost up to $70 million per kilometer, sometimes even more depending on terrain and urban complexity. To put that in perspective, that's like paving a highway made of gold bricks. But construction is just the start. Once the line is built, the operating economics kick in. Maglev trains rely on linear motors, which consume a huge amount of electricity at very high speeds. Maintenance is also far more demanding than for traditional rail. Specialized crews, complex control systems, and constant monitoring of electromagnetic equipment. Every kilometer of guideway is essentially a high-tech machine that needs to be kept in sync. That means not every city or corridor can justify it. A route has to carry massive passenger volumes or serve a strategic purpose to make sense financially. This is why skeptics, especially in Western media, often laugh at China's maglev ambitions. To them, the economics look brutal. Huge upfront costs, high operating bills, and uncertain returns. And yet, Beijing argues that for the right routes, like ultra-busy corridors between megacities, the payoff could outweigh the cost. The real question is whether those bets will hold up when the bills come due. Speed excites, but safety decides. A maglev train pushing past 600 kilometers per hour isn't just about breaking records. It's about proving that such speeds can be safe, reliable, and repeatable every single day. Here's the challenge. The systems that control a maglev are new. From fail-safe braking to emergency power cutoffs to managing electromagnetic interactions with nearby infrastructure, everything has to be tested, simulated, and certified. Unlike conventional rail, there isn't a century of operating experience to lean on. Every standard has to be written almost from scratch. That's why China's testing burden is massive. Engineers run thousands of hours of trials, pushing prototypes to their limits, studying vibrations, electromagnetic fields, and response times. Each stage has to be verified by regulators before a single passenger steps aboard. Critics point out that this process could take years, and they're right. Skepticism here is valid. High speed without proven safety is just a headline. But supporters argue that China has already mastered large-scale safety systems for its conventional high-speed rail, and those lessons are being translated into maglev. The key difference is time and whether the safety case can keep pace with the ambition. This project is about more than shaving minutes off a timetable. China's super maglev program carries strategic, economic, and social goals that stretch far beyond the tracks. First, it's about technological independence. By mastering maglev, China reduces reliance on foreign rail tech, an area long dominated by Japan and Germany. That independence feeds into industrial strength, boosting high-precision manufacturing, advanced materials, and control electronics across multiple sectors. Second, there's the economic ripple effect. Imagine shrinking travel times between megacities, Shanghai to Beijing in about two hours, Guangzhou to Shenzhen in minutes. That kind of connectivity doesn't just move people faster. It reshapes regional economies, expands commuting zones, and opens new hubs for business growth. And third, there's the soft power factor. A functioning maglev at world-leading speeds would be an exportable technology, a symbol of national prestige, and a powerful tool in China's Belt and Road playbook. It's not just a train, it's a demonstration of capability. So when critics dismiss the maglev as just speed, they miss the bigger picture. For Beijing, this is about cementing a place in the technological future and using rail as a lever for modernization and global influence. When China unveiled its high-speed maglev, Western media reacted with skepticism and ridicule. Headlines called it a fantasy, a costly experiment, or even a publicity stunt. But there's more to the story than mockery. Some of the criticism is economic realism. As we've seen, building a maglev line can cost up to $70 million per kilometer with huge operating expenses. To outsiders, it looks like a financial gamble that might never pay off. Other concerns are technical. 
safety standards, testing requirements, and unproven operational reliability at such speeds naturally invite caution. Critics worry whether these trains can handle real-world conditions day after day. Finally, there's geopolitical framing. Media in the West often view China's technological announcements through the lens of competition and suspicion. A demonstration is often treated as a finished nationwide reality, which it isn't. So while some laughter is grounded, in fact, other parts are ideological or premature. The key takeaway? Headlines alone don't tell the full story. China's maglev is both a technological achievement and a work in progress. And understanding it requires looking past the caricature. So what do we make of China's super maglev? Is it a fantasy, a folly, or a glimpse of the future of transportation? The answer isn't simple. Because this project sits at the intersection of ambition, technology, and risk. Think back to where it all started. A country decades behind the traditional railway giants Japan and Germany. China didn't have the decades of accumulated maglev expertise, but it built a systematic learning machine, introducing foreign tech, digesting it, absorbing it into domestic systems, and then reinventing it. The results are staggering. A train that floats on magnets at speeds that would make even airplanes blink, powered by a 30,000-kilometer high-speed rail network that already moves hundreds of millions of people every year. Of course, there are real challenges. Engineering hurdles are immense, from the precision-built tracks to rare earth materials and massive foundations. Operating costs and construction expenses are eye-popping. Safety and testing are non-negotiable at these speeds. And yes, the skeptics both at home and abroad have plenty of reasons to question whether this maglev will ever become widespread. But here's the thing. The potential payoff is transformational. Imagine traveling between megacities faster than any conventional train connecting regional economies like never before, creating exportable technology, and demonstrating that China can not only catch up, but innovate at the frontier. The maglev is more than a train. It's a statement about ambition, industrial capacity, and a country's ability to take risks for long-term gain. So here's the challenge to you, the viewer. Don't just take the headlines at face value. Ask yourself, where should China's maglev lines go first? Which routes make sense for investment? And how will this technology reshape cities, travel, and economies in the decades ahead? If this deep dive sparked your curiosity, hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell. Because in our next video, we'll break down the economics of maglev versus traditional high-speed rail and see which cities are most likely to benefit first. In the end, speed, scale, and ambition matter. But so does perspective. The story of China's super maglev reminds us that innovation is messy, risky, and thrilling all at once. And in the race to the future, curiosity always beats ridicule.